All right. So again, hello, welcome everyone. So I'm going to um, give a short introduction on what we talk about or what this is about roughly. And then everyone who wants to is welcome to uh, say something and um, just turn on the microphone yourself um, if you want to say something or you can write in the chat of course and I will most likely read it and maybe say something too. So what's this about and that's the good news already at the beginning it's not about anything this, what seems to be happening, is everything in terms of it's whole and complete. It's naturally perfect, so to speak. Um, however, it's not perfect for anyone. So this means that there is no experience of this perfection. It's a blind perfection. In the end, that's exactly why it's perfect, because it has no idea about itself at all. Because what happens, the totality of what seems to be happening doesn't experience itself. There isn't anything that's outside of what happens, experiencing what happens and knowing what happens. So this knower, this experiencer, usually <laughs> called I, <laughs> this experiencer doesn't have any reality at all. That's what's meant when I say that there is no one the separate awareness, the separate presence, the separate consciousness, or the seemingly separate presence, consciousness, awareness, me, individual, soul, however you want to call it, or however the me calls itself. It's this which doesn't have any substance at all. And of course, all seeking, all ideas about there being a higher reality, a lower reality or any kind of reality at all are based on this impression to be a separate something, a separate someone. So there isn't anyone, this I isn't real, which means there are no questions, there are no answers. The whole seeking dynamic is purely illusory. And within that dynamic, there will never be an answer to itself. The seeking will never find an answer to its own seeking, to its own existence, to the existence of the universe, to all those so-called deep questions, to all those so-called metaphysical questions, there will never be an answer. Because this one thing that sets up the metaphysical level, the spiritual level, I am, this spirit, does not exist at all. <clears throat> so that's it basically. So there shouldn't be any questions left actually, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I think we covered it all. <laughs> well, anyway, everyone is welcome. Hi, Andreas. Hello. You know, like occasionally in the past, you've referred to this jokingly as a spiritual hospice. Yes. Like when nothing else, the hope that was in all the other stuff has gone and then you're just here waiting to die. Yeah. I kind of see it like a sign that I'm a failure, that I couldn't. I know you'd probably say no one gets their life to work, but I see it as a sign that I'm a failure, that I was unsuccessful at getting my life to work. Yeah. I suppose that's it really, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, what's the question? What would be the question? So, yeah, of course. I just wish I could have become successful, but I know yeah. that that's a load of shit and it doesn't exist. There's no such thing as becoming a successful me. Yeah. Well, lots of me believe they're successful, but it can yeah. collapse quickly, that impression uh, I have yeah, made. That's it. as far as it goes. Some me's believe that they are successful. So, yeah, it doesn't go can, further than that. And that can collapse very quickly, this impression that they're successful. Absolutely. If life takes another turn, it's very easy that this story uh, turns out to be an illusion. Thank you. Thank you.
but it doesn't have to be. I mean, some people can believe that they are a successful me until the end of their lives. So why not? Okay, question. In a way, it's very clear what you are saying. And in the illusion, there is no fire in me. All right, I don't, I don't get that. That was something from the chat, basically. Not everyone can read all the messages. <laughs> so sometimes I get direct messages. You can't see them. Only sitting on the couch and sleeping. Yeah. This sounds like a very nice holiness. Now we divide in nice wholeness and not so nice wholeness. Andreas, can I ask you a question? Please, yes. Okay. Um, well, sometimes you say that there's everything and there's nothing. Yes. And do you mean with nothing, there's no person, there's no doer, there's no... Well, there is no, there is no experience of any kind of reality. Okay. Yeah, because the sense of something is happening, something is existing, whatever mm -hmm. that is, yeah. inside or outside or in general or in this moment this notion of existence is the sense of me mm -hmm. or the other way around when the sense of me collapses or turns out to be inexistent there is no notion of existence left okay but there's a notion that something happens no exactly this notion is the illusion, so to speak. That's without substance. Uh, but there is talking now. Well, I don't know who, but not for me. And not for you. No, there isn't anything here that can confirm oh, okay. that talking is happening by experiencing it or by the notion of existence. It's exactly this impression that says, Oh, but there is talking now. Mm -hmm. That doesn't have any reality. There isn't anything. Okay. And what's and what's everything then? Well, everything is. I don't mean it in terms of a physical thing. Mm -hmm. Everything that exists. Mm -hmm. It rather refers to this. Um, and this impression that something is lacking and that there could be more fulfillment, more happiness, okay. more of those, this metaphysical stuff. Yeah. What the okay. person is actually looking for. Yeah. To feel better, to, to feel more complete. Yeah. Okay. And, and there and, isn't more. Yeah. And I understand that. But how do you describe the, what are you doing now? Or they, uh, there's nobody doing something, but how do you how do you describe this person? <laughs> I can't. It's a oh, you can't. Okay. No, okay. really, I can't. I'm totally dependent on the words that leave my mouth, but okay. I can't even describe this. Okay. 
Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So there is no no story inside this body commenting on what this is. And yeah, I yeah. can't even have a look actually. So there isn't anything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, the shock of no existence. <laughs> well. The shock of no existence is no existence as well. Oh. It's good morning. Morning. Um, so strange because it's from the perspective of the me, it sounds so morbid, you know, no existent, nothing. And whenever it's said, it's just like, there's this incredible joy that arises within me. It's just like, whenever I hear that, it's like a giant yes with like infinite exclamation points inside me when I hear that, you know? Yeah. And it's like, in a strange way, it's something that is, I fear the most, but when I hear it confirmed here, yeah. it's glorious. Yes, absolutely. Yes. All the me hears is no, 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 not this, not this. All its values and hopes and dreams seemingly don't exist, but that's all that the me can focus on. Its dreams and its hopes and its understanding. So all it hears <clears throat> when hearing this message is no, 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 negative, doesn't exist, negative. But it's just not the case. Because what's confirmed apparently is this being everything and this being whole and complete, just not for anyone. And that's pure joy. Yes, but it's unexplainable, no reason. No reason, unexplainable. Can't be arrived at. Yeah, can't be owned. No one can arrive in this joy, having it, owning it, be safe in it. Mm. Yeah. Yes, and again, what the me hears is me, but I can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> there is this huge, glorious joy, <laughs> but not for me. <laughs> and 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 the apparent sense of existence sort of dies into this, melts Absolutely. into this, melts into yeah. this. Apparently, by the turning out that it has never been real, never, yeah, in the first place. But yes, it's real. But you can't tell that to me. No. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's really a melting away of this separate energy, which is rather energetic than yeah, emotional or intellectual. Mm. Yes, that's why liberation, uh, seen from the person, looks like death. That's really how yeah, it looks like. And it can't be explained to the person that it's all fine. No, the person is deadly scared uh, about dying. Yeah. Can't tell the person, no, it'll be all good. You'll be there and you'll be happy. Mm. All your dreams will become fulfilled. No, of course not. This I. Well, that's what everyone else is telling you. Yes, of course. The whole world. I mean, humanity is telling you that, or possibilities how to have that. Yeah, exactly. About that, you can make it. Well, thank you for killing me. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, question. Can you tell more about the energetic component of the me? Well, uh, yes and no. I mean, it's also a very, very clumsy, um, a very clumsy description. In the end, that's what the me tells about itself, that it is not a thought, that it's not a feeling, that it's some kind of energy, some kind of spiritual entity. That's where those words come from, awareness, presence, consciousness, uh, the spirit, the soul, as if it's something that really exists, 
but it's not um, worldly or materialistic. I think that's how the me describes itself. And that's where these words come from. It's actually the me describing itself. There is no such thing actually as a spirit or as an energy, as an energetic contraction, I think Tony calls it, uh, a thing that seems to live in the body and that seems to be real and which says to itself, me, I'm me, this is me, and I'm everything. That's illusory. And that's what we talked about right now. That's the notion of existence, the notion of presence, the notion of happening. It, it's only this apparent center which is that, this energy of presence that believes to be aware of itself. And as a story, we sometimes call this energetic here to point out that it's not an emotion or not a thought. But of course, a lot of emotions and thoughts circle around it. Often it's all three, so to speak. To be someone is a very holistic experience. It's energetic, it seems to be physical, it seems to be an emotional and an inter and a lot of stories in one. But in the end, the whole illusion boils down to this notion of presence, which does not exist. But as I said, I don't see an, an, an energy within people. It's not that there is a real separate energy in anyone here. Of course not. There may just be this claim, I'm someone, which is what seems to be happening. But there never is a someone anywhere in anyone. But that's not logical. Andreas, hello. Um, hello. I say this with great, great trepidation, but the unreal cannot die. I mean, I don't like, this sounds flippant, very shallow, but fear, the, the fear can be, this fear of dying can actually feel like it's real and it's there, all right? But the actual die, it, it'll never experience, it'll never yeah, experience. Yeah, it never that. happens. There isn't a dying of anything. That's what I say. This, it only see, looks like that within the dream, but this life is completely dreamt. No one will die. Of course. Oh, it, this, this tragedy that the person lives in is completely illusory. I mean, there's right. no tragic at all. And the fear of that is based upon the uh, assumption of existence. I exist. I exist. On the That's notion what... of existence. I exist and I need to be alive and life is valuable and I need to go on living. I need to go on having experiences. I need to be there. Yeah. That's a dream. Yeah. Thank you. Nothing bad can happen. Basically, because nothing is happening. <laughs> Well, it's the dream, as if something really, really bad can happen. If I decide to watch TV tonight, maybe something very, very bad, well, whatever the person is afraid of, to not meditate enough to whatever, to die. It's a miserable life, constantly trying to avoid death. Oh, yes, absolutely. Especially if there are no such things as life and death. You first have to keep up the dream that there is something called life and my life. That's in itself already very exhausting. And then you have to protect your made up life against the assumption that you could die. Oh. Oh. Even when I think about it. Andreas, hey. 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 
Um, you, you, well, you're talking about that. You often uh, express them the, the belief in life, the belief in death, the, death, the experience of it by a separate self is very energetic. Uh, you mentioned also that it was a sort of a, a constrained energy. The, the, this belief that there's life and conversely is something called death is something so central to the me. It, do, you, do you think it endlessly is sustaining that belief just by its own experiences and confirmations as it goes well, through life? Well, that's what the me is, the experience to be alive and the illusory attempt to be able to sustain. It's not that the person is really sustaining its existence. I mean, it doesn't have any power at all. It's just what seems to be happening. And in the story, one could say it could be over in an instant. It's not that you sustain yourself. Yeah, and the, as you say, there never, there never, ever was a circumstance where there truly was a me anyway. Yes, which is very hard to to uh, for a me to. Uh, well, one can't know it, but uh, exactly, yeah. one can't know it because the me is an illusion. An illusion yeah. can't know anything. An, illu an illusion can't understand anything. That's why all yeah. understanding is useless. And but, but it, it's the way that you describe it as energetic. I had a, a, a not a very pleasant thing happen to me last week where this friend of mine, uh, I knew he was going downhill badly and I'd spoken to him. I'd got, he's a big muscular guy. I'd given him a big, big hug and say, you know, I'm here to talk. Anyway, sad news, he ended up killing himself a couple of days ago. And I don't mean to appropriate that in, into this conversation in a strange way, but something really odd happened because he's a big muscular guy. So I'd just given him a big hug. And then I was like one of the last to speak to him. I find out very soon after he's dead. And so it, there was a weird, nothing conceptual, but if you're a, I'm a, a friendly hug of a very muscular, tough guy, then bam, not there, right? And it had a sort of weird wobble on one's energetic investment on the meaning of life and death and that fundamental duality, that, that the duality with most, most primacy. And it was just, it's the way you describe it as energetic. I've never, I, I think of things too conceptual, but it, it is an energetic sustained belief in life and a, a, an energetic the, uh, yeah, I would even say belief is, is way too superficial. I mean, it's not only a belief. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And so I suppose there can be a loosening, a loosening of that, even though there's not a real me there, mm -hmm. there could be an apparent loosening of yeah. that. Yes. Wedding to that bit, that uh, uh, sense within itself. But... Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank That's you. I... Thanks. Um, yes. Hi, Andres. Could Hello. you say something about um, conditioning, you know, and the me? Yeah. Well, what seems to be happening is a conditioned body that's in the end not owned by anyone. But usually when there is the sense of me, the me thinks it in inhabits this body, including <laughs> the conditioning of the body. So yes. it's suddenly my conditioning. Yes. But that's all right. I mean... We are all conditioned, it... apparently, hmm. fortunately. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Andreas. Hello. Yeah, Tony said something to me and I want to ask you about it. But sometimes when I tell you that, you said, oh, maybe you should ask him. But I'll ask you anyway. And <laughs> he said to me, when you go to the zoo 
and you look at the animals, you see them behind bars and you think they're in a prison, but that's the freedom you long for. What does that mean? Is it because <laughs> like, I don't get that? Is it because what he's saying is there's no experience of restriction? Well, there just isn't anyone, yeah. <laughs> but please don't start to lock yourself in. I mean, no. Well, I do that anyway. <laughs> I, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think it wasn't a method. <laughs> no, I, it's the point of it that basically, like, because obviously the me is looking for freedom in conditions changing. When the conditions are right, then I'll feel free. And obviously it never works. But I still... Well, yeah, because you, well, you just said because there isn't anyone. So there's no one in the animal that's in the cage. Well, I can only guess what he meant, but that would be my first guess. I'm trying to understand freedom, that it's not about conditions. That's what it is. Yeah, and, and there is no experience of freedom. That's the freedom. You will never become free. You'll never have an experience of freedom in a total sense. You can have a transient, illusory experience of, I feel free. But uh, that's not what we talk about here. So no. the freedom that we talk about is impersonal, inexperienced, not owned by anyone. It can, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, yeah, well, it's not. It's not going to make sense to the me that the freedom is that it's not there. Like, yeah, that there. Yeah, it's not even a freedom that can be achieved or longed for, or desirable. It's not desirable. Desi that's it's not desirable at all. Yeah, because that's the thing. When I hear the word freedom, I think, well, oh, that sounds nice, but it's not desirable. So what we talk about is not desirable for the person. It would only choose it which it will never do, out of pure desperation. Yeah, but he doesn't want it. Yeah, he doesn't want it. Oh, no, of course not. Thank you. Thank you. Because it lives in these high stories and high aspirations about itself. I'm me, and I can become perfectly free, and I can become perfectly enlightened, because I'm me, because I'm, I'm me. I can become that. And it's only well, so, possible by me, for me. Yes. So I think I think some of the times I've spoke to you recently on the phone, I've been saying about kind of like this being about nothing is awful for the person, but you obviously say like that is the freedom. Well, this being nothing is awful for the person. That's why it's constantly seeking. But yeah. Yeah. Well, it's because when you said about the person having high aspirations. About itself. Yeah. Yeah. That's the whole thing about this has to be leading somewhere meaningful, whereas for this all, to, well, I said for it to be about nothing, but you said for it to be nothing, it is nothing. So the hope of ever getting to that place that the me's trying to get, like, yeah. No, there's no getting at at all. Hi. Hello. Um, you already mentioned in the beginning that the, the me somehow just hears the no, the, the many no's in this message. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I think for, for me also the problem is that, that, you know, from the me experience, everything is somehow translated into an experience. So if you if you listen to statements like there's nothing existing, um, I have somehow strange fears of <laughs> staying or, or, or becoming, hmm, of staying somewhere as a 
still as a subject having a kind of objectified experience of nothing happening or nothing there, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's what happens anyway. I mean, the, the me translates everything in a personal yeah. experience. It yeah. looks at a tree and translates it into its world. So mm -hmm. it's just a confirmation of what already happens. So like with everything, so to speak, the me also uses this message to confirm its separate position like it does that when it looks at a tree or looks at clouds. It just confirms itself again. I'm separate, I'm me, I'm separate from wholeness. Something bad is happening. And I have to find an answer to this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it sounds contradictory because it's a statement, but it's not a knowing position the same yeah time. it's not even a statement really but yeah i know but again the person can only see it as a statement again yeah just exactly as it sees the tree as a tree it'll regard those words or anyone's words as a statement and potentially true like a tree seems real like clouds seem be an experience let's put it like this it's inevitable as long as this is going on that's what's going on and it's whole and complete for no one <clears throat> funny that's what the me does i mean the me participates in this meeting and for the me that's the confirmation that it's on a good path or that it's on a path i don't know if it's regarded as good but though there's constantly pointing out that there is no path this is not a method this isn't real this is not part of a path me's conclusion is oh great i'm I must be on a path when we are here talking about so-called liberation and stuff. So for the me, again, this is the confirmation to be on a path, to be a me that's on a path, or whatever the conclusion is, the me will always draw a personal conclusion that's kind of opposite, well, there is no opposite, but that's kind of opposite to what's being uh, talked about here. There is no path. And the me says, ah, me hearing those words means I'm on a good path. <laughs> that I'm able to hear those words <laughs> and make it and, and understand them potentially. <clears throat> well, um, I'm going to filter everything that you say through my own filtering process and misunderstand it, I'm sure. But I show up at the meetings because for some odd reason, there's comfort in what I hear. Oh yeah, I don't, claim to under, I don't claim to understand it, but there's this calming of the sea kind of type of event that just... I I mean, what, what's energetically pointed out here is that even that, is whole and complete. Yeah, and that's yeah. where the joy comes from. So it's not about that this illusion needs to drop and then we have wholeness. No, this is wholeness. This meeting, what seems to be happening with all that seems to be happening, including those apparent me dynamics and stuff, is whole and complete. And where else would I hear that? Well, no one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Even though I never really hear it 
anyway, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of me is like, part, part of me is like, well, if the apparent me drops, that of course phrase, I know it's not real, but the apparent me drops, that means that I won't even, I won't even know Andreas. I won't even know. I like, all of that oh. disappears as well. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. There is no interest. There's nothing to know. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't want to hear that. I'm like, no, wait. Yeah. No, hold on. <laughs> it's like I've been led into deeper water, but don't let go because I can't swim yet. It's that type of adolescent, not a need, but I'm going to be quiet now because I'm not making it. What I'm saying is, I think that a lot of what I hear depends upon you saying it. Are you, is this making sense? It's like, when you talk, I hear, all right, this is words, right? Oh yeah. This so, seems, no. are, are you rushing me off stage? No, or? not at all. No, no, I, I wanted to help you. No, okay, go on, try more, try no, more. <laughs> No, I, sorry, I really, I, I, <laughs> no, it's perfectly fine. It no, was no, just, I, no. this whole energy of confirmation towards you. Right. And when the dropping, all of that, which, all of that disappears, all of that disappears. That, 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 that comfort that I get from hearing the, the, the talk. All of that also disappears because there's no one that needs the comfort. There's no one that needs to hear it. Oh, well, uh, well uh, there may be joy, but it's not comforting anyone. But it may be purely joyous to hear those words, but there wouldn't be anyone comforted by them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The joy right. of hearing would be it already. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Andreas, it, 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 would it be right to say that there can be a, sorry, would it be right then to say that, that there's a, a, a continuation of thoughts? No. But, but there's just not somebody taking meaning from them and building a story from them. But the, Okay, uh, so let's say apparently there is a continuation of thoughts, but not for anyone. So yeah, you'd, uh, you'd still want apparently, yeah. Uh, so there is no one there who knows that apparently there is a continuation of thoughts. There would just be a continuation of thoughts. Only if there are breaks from thinking, then there is no continuation anymore. It's very simplified and superficial, I'm sorry. But yeah. I I get, I get what you're driving at. It's hard, it's hard for a separate Impossible. me to, to see thoughts as uh, things it doesn't, that aren't occurring to it. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Do you have friends, Andreas? Friends? Yes. What is that? That's exactly what I meant. Yeah, yeah, that. So, the, yeah, all of that disappears, doesn't it? I mean... Oh, yeah, all of it. Yeah, friends, family, enemies. I don't like... In general, <laughs> I don't... People in general, actually. Things in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't like asking the questions of what happens after because there's no way to for me to to know well, nothing that, right? happens after. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but I think that the fear of the, the 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 fear of the dying thing, which I thought I never understood that, I would welcome it because who the hell wants this life? Um, but part of that's like no, no. If that happens, then I won't have friends. I won't have the joys that I do. All of that disappears also. Yeah, but it's it, firstly you that disappears. It's not that you stay and your friends disappear. 
it just turns out that it just turns out well, that, you, that you never had friends, Jack. <laughs> I was kind of hoping I was kind of hoping the enemies would disappear, but I would stay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. exactly. <laughs> how, how strange to even contemplate that. Okay, well. Oh yeah, of course, because I mean the person things. It's good to have those things because they give it. They, they give you something. That's why the person thinks, oh, that would be bad. Me without friends, me without money, me without lovely feelings, me without thinking, I can be enlightened. Whoa, that sounds like a very sad life because it's those things that make my life worthwhile. So, but the me won't, the me won't know any lack because the me won't, there won't be an experience. You won't experience that. Uh, yeah, so all of that collapses. And the huge surprise is that nothing is lacking at all. That it was yeah. the, that this was just uh, trading based on an illusion. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. Thanks. Of course, for the person that sounds horrible to lose everything but still being there. No, itself is what turns out to be illusory. And out of that, automatically, the whole objectified world turns out to have been an illusion. Namely, that there are things that are, <laughs> or bodies <laughs> that are friendly, or that are inhabited by a friend, by a friend me. Okay. Well, Andreas. Yes. Um, um, can you say that wholeness is an illusion? No, because there is no such thing as wholeness. The idea of wholeness is part of the illusion, yeah. But uh, there is no such thing as wholeness. The idea about it, that's an idea. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, a question. If depression manifests itself as physical and energetic and is not connected to thought, is it still a me thing? Uh, well, I think there is no real answer to that because it might also be a biological thing, some hormones going wrong in the body or apparently wrong. But as long as there is someone, this will still be regarded as personal and create the illusion of suffering from it. But, um, I think that, that would be what it is then. If it's not coming from thoughts and stories, it would just be a biological thing, which will maybe also by being poisoned or the body, whatever the body does, we don't know really. Andreas, I don't know if it's worth me sharing this, but I'm just thinking about it based on that. I was talking to Jim the other day about depression and he said it could be he thinks in my case like a conditioned bodily habit mm. and I said to him what so it would carry on if the me dropped and he said no because habit needs self-referencing to continue mm. yeah. yeah but on the other hand it might not stop overnight maybe it would just fade out for the rest of your life Who knows? I love the way you just took the hope away. <laughs> oh. oh. But that I so but that would then know if 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 the conditioning that causes say depression um is related to the me then um, if there's nothing to reference it, you know, if the me dissolves or whatever, yeah. um, then the conditioning is affected, if you like. 
because can there's be. no reference. Yeah, yeah can be, uh, doesn't mm -hmm. have to be. Yeah. One can't know, one just can't know when the me drops, you may go on being polite because that's how you grow up, but you may also stop being polite. Mm -hmm. It's un utterly unpredictable. And either way, it would just be what seems to be happening. Mm -hmm. um, but without a me for it to be adding to the story of it happening to me, are being caused by my conditioning, say. Um, that would that would be less suffering. Why? <laughs> I don't... Um, because there's no story going on that creates more painful thoughts or something oh, yeah lovely. maybe yeah. yeah yeah okay yeah so apparently it might be less painful okay yeah yeah okay yeah well that would just be what seems to be happening so yeah more or less conditioning more or less uh, well i mean that's a very weird term because it's a story kind of unhealthy patterns or apparently unpathia, but that's all a story. So. It's a bit like having more or less money. So that's just what seems to be happening and everyone has as much or as little money as they have. And that's wholeness. And so everyone has their pleasant or uh, unhealthy or unhealthy conditioning. It's just what seems to be happening. And of course, within the story, this can be relative to each other, but it doesn't really have anything to do with fulfillment or unfulfillment. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Did all habitual self-referencing stop instantly with the dropping for you and others? Well, the self dropped, but the body went on for many years uh, living out what could be regarded as unhealthy patterns or patterns. So for me, uh, the habits that were stored in the body, they didn't stop overnight, only <laughs> me. Only I stopped overnight. <clears throat> and that was the, the knot that tries to keep it all together. Let's, let's put it like this. And the self-referencing thinking patterns? Well, uh, they stopped instantly. But the thing is that a lot of, uh, it's very, very hard to say what you mean with self-referencing because all the thinking about me, this me becoming a fulfilled me that stopped instantly, automatically together with me. But of course the body has the ability to think about itself. I should eat, I have to. Oh, well, they, yeah, that dropped, of course. or the belief in those thoughts. I mean, I should eat or I have to eat. This thought might go on until this body dies. It sounds like a natural response to hunger, but it's a response that's just the body having to itself. So maybe one could say it was the illusion that those thoughts refer to a self, namely that there is a self which should make the eating happen, <laughs> which is a complete dream. <laughs> the I never made this body eat <laughs> as much as this I never managed to stop this body from eating. <laughs> or anything else, of course. 
the eye also never stopped me from going to the toilet, though I thought how nice it would be to be able to stay in bed. <clears throat> you could eat without having the thought that you are hungry. Oh, yeah, yeah of course. I mean, sometimes I even ate before I was hungry, but that's another story. <laughs> It doesn't matter. It's really, well, yeah. Okay, Anita. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, here it's, it still seems to be two. There is this wholeness and there is nothing. All right. So, yes. But I, I think, and um, in a way, there were, then there was only nothing and everything, of course. When, when the me really drops, then there was this whole, wholeness story, because that, I think that's a story. It's not re le relevant anymore, then it dropped. Yeah, the same like the nothing story that drops as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You have no idea how happy I was to hear you say that you're that your habits didn't drop away immediately, even after the parent you had died. Because yeah, in fact, a lot of behaviors can become, all right, I'll speak for me. Once I heard that the me wasn't, there is no me, it's like someone took the lock off of a cage that contained a Tasmanian devil. <laughs> and a lot of behaviors that I didn't engage in prior now just sort of like runs amok it's like there's no filter there's no filter and hopefully hopefully that will dissipate over time if it doesn't kill me first <laughs> so and i find myself wondering what the hell i mean where did all of this come from why would why would i now hearing what i've heard all right, need to even be doing this, but there it is. So <laughs> I'm just saying, I hope you're right and it does dissipate before it kills me, but it'll be what it'll be, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, Andreas. Yeah, no. <laughs> Well, there's just no resolution of any kind. I mean, those things about what changes be afterwards or before, it's really, it 100% doesn't matter because everything or what seems to be happening then, which can't be predicted and which, and which is not logical or organic or something, it would just be whole and complete. I mean, this whole thing that there are habitual patterns. Well, what's, what should that be, actually, when everything just is what it is, which is unknowable wholeness? So it's all in the story. I mean, this body is still breathing. Is this a habit? Or I don't know, will this stop at some point? Or I have no idea. Is uh, eating every morning a habit? I don't know. Or is it just what happens? Or is it what the body's doing? Or I've no idea, really. Can you can say? I yes. Yeah. Can I say something about depression? Please. Um, my impression is, is that depression is very much related to the sense of self. I think, uh, and, you know, shoot this down if you need to, but my sense is that it's, um, in, a, in an intellectual sense, it's related to the loss of hope. In other words, there's nowhere to go anymore. So the, the source of, it's just 
it just sort of sits there. There's nowhere to go. I am just here without being having the ability to have any hope that will bring me fulfillment in Absolutely. that particular yeah, moment. I think, and yeah. I think energetically, yes, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but I think energetically it's also because the, the, the sense of the me is this forward moving energy. It's always trying to go beyond the horizon. And then energetically that just sort of just is pressed down and it sits there like a swamp or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, I think there is both. I think for, for a lot of people, that's the case, what you said. But I can also imagine in some cases, it's just coming from, I don't know, a hormonal dysfunction for a while. Or, but I have no idea, you know. And I think in most cases, it's just exactly as you said. Of course. I think the hormonal dysfunction is just a manifestation of the body of this condition, what I just described. Yeah, maybe. My, in my sense. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, can you say something more about the nothing story also dropped? Yeah, well, the story that this is wholeness and uh, the idea that this is something called wholeness or that this is something that's nothing or that's both ideas, projections from the personal energy. Every story drops, every knowing drops, every idea about what this is, if this is, it's just all part of the dream, all intellectual comprehension is purely illusory and useless absolutely useless it has nothing to do with what we talk about here and the person can go on understanding things and it'll have one experience of understanding after the other and nothing happens there is no coming closer to what we talk about here at all it's just going on living in circles about finding insights about understanding and understanding and of course in the person's Im impression it feels as if i understand more and more but that's not happening not at all there isn't more and more understanding there is just one illusion of understanding after the other it never goes deeper never not a single bit it's just the person having the illusion of understanding something. And in that sense, it doesn't matter if it understands how whole and complete and total this is, or how nothing and unreal and illusory this is. It's both completely irrelevant. <laughs> and the, the attempt to comprehend reality is futile. It's just futile. Okay, uh, thank you, Apparent Andreas. Enjoy your lunch. Yeah, I don't eat lunch, but uh, thank you. I'll have a, a glass of water. So, <laughs> yeah. Are you fasting? No. No. No, no, I never have lunch since uh, years, actually. I just have a huge breakfast. No. <laughs> You got to eat heavy, Andres, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I would have if I would have still place for it. Okay. Last, uh, oh, two questions. Okay, last two questions. Uh, does the me suspect its non-existence? No. The immediate resolution that this is not enough seems to lead to idea, am I enough? Or am I even? All right. And with this, the co-arising quest for reality and all metaphysical head scratching, looking for confirmation of itself because of this fundamental lack of reality, no? Well, well, who knows? I guess there is no answer to it. In the end, I just wouldn't bring too many because of that, because of that. It sounds a bit too logical to me because this whole experience to be someone, it's just this energetic bundle which combines all that you wrote, so to speak. That's just its experience without there being a first this and then comes this and then this. it's just how it feels. I am, I'm separate. Um, 
and maybe one could say there is a sense of living in a fragile world, but I don't think that me can suspect its non-existence, actually, to be honest. I think that's not in the realm of the person. The idea, maybe the idea, but the possibility of oneself to not be real, I think this this is actually not not really in the realm or in the possibility of the person. As I said, it can have this as a theoretical idea. And the rest all you wrote, yes, but not as a this and this. It's just, yeah, got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, last comment. If you could have <laughs> if you could have dinner with any historical figure, who would it be and why? I have no idea. There are so many I would love to meet. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that's sorry, I can't make. I can make someone up. But... All right. <clears throat> Jesus or Hitler. Or I have no idea. Both interesting, kind of. All right. So that's it, basically. There is no one. There is no message. There is nothing to do and nothing to not do. There's no suggestion of any kind. This I, the seeking I, the seeking dynamic, doesn't have any substance at all. There is no resolution to it. There is no answer to it. It's just purely insubstantial. There isn't anyone in anyone. There's just this for no one. Thanks a lot for joining. I wish you a lovely day. So nice to see you all. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Have a nice day. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>